Okay, let's begin. So, in our first lecture on uh, kidney anatomy, we discussed this. I'll just go through this quickly so that we, we can have some idea. Like, uh, there were some students who joined late, so they are not accustomed to this, and we need this for the next module. So, first of all, there's four, three people, and I need you guys to answer the questions. Okay? So, uh, just try. It's not going to be hard. Can you tell me what this is? Unmute and speak, please. Liver. Liver. Okay. Now. Okay. Uh, there's a structure here which I explained. Uh, can you tell me what this is? This is a bit brighter than the other structures. What is it? Yes. Remember this, AI is black. Blood vessels usually appear more brighter. And organs, solid organs, they are dull. And if there is a contrast, so you can see here, the large intestine, there's a barium contrast. It appears really bright, okay? Just remember those facts. Can someone tell me what this organ is? Pancreas. Yes, it's the pancreas. So the way you check for it is, okay, uh, can someone label what this organ is? i give you guys a hint. Stomach. It's the stomach. Okay. Um, remember the anatomy just below the stomach going like this, we have the pancreas, okay? And what's this organ? It's related to our KUB discussion. Bladder. Bladder, okay. We have discussed these previously. Another one, what's this? Liver. Liver. Then what is this? What do you think? No. Stomach has a air bubbles. Can you see here? See here. Yeah, so there's an air bubble here in the stomach. What do you think this is? It's a solid organ on the left side. Spleen? Yes, it's a spleen. And obviously these are the kidneys. You can see the kidney pyramids, the papilla, everything. You can even see the major calluses here. You can see the major minor calluses. Okay. This is the kidney. What do you think this is? The muscle, the psoas letter. Yes, it's a psoas. P S O A S. Then this? Iliacus. Iliacus. Now, I hope you guys understand these imaging because these are not hard. It's just, you guys need to know the anatomical locations of each thing. First, always orient yourself when it comes to these abdominal uh, exam, uh, exam uh, sorry, abdominal radiography. Always find the liver, okay? After that, it becomes easy. Can someone tell me what this is? It's on the left side. Look at the shape. And a very important hint you can see here. Something is there. Stomach. It's the stomach. Also, I told you guys, when it comes to reading these abdominal CT scans, first you find the liver. Then you find the, this structure. What do you think this is? It's the outer, abdominal outer. And remember, it is slightly to the left of the body. You can see here, if this is the midline, you can, here's the midline actually. You can see it's slightly towards the left. Okay. Just a question. What do you think this muscle is? 
spinal cord. No, this is the rear. You can see the spinal cord. You can see the spine, the body of the vertebral column. What do you think this muscle is? It should uh, be uh, anterior side row. Sorry? Yes. That is lumbricum or sows. No, it's look at the location. Look at the location, it's right in front. It's right in front, somewhere here. What do you think? There's a gap also. You can see this gap here. What do you think this muscle is on either side? <laughs> Sahala, I didn't hear if you said the word rectus abdominis, but if you said that, it is correct. It's the rectus abdominis. Okay. Just be comfortable. That's the main thing. When it comes to reading radiology, the first thing is it's not hard. You just need to know these three rules. Okay. Air is black. Blood vessels are brighter. And organs are usually more dull. Okay. Now there's... T1 image and T2 image, but for now, just try to understand this. What do you think this is? It's also on the left side. Spleen. Spleen. Okay. Now, can someone tell me what this is? It's hidden inside the liver. Okay. Portal vein. Then there's one more structure, which is a bit brighter than the others, which is to the right of the abdominal aorta. What do you think this is? Th guys, this is just a revision. Okay. Uh, no, it's inferior vena cava. Sorry? Yes, inferior vena cava. It's the inferior vena cava. Again, let's take a look at this as we go down. So this image is taken from the top region. Now we go down and again, orient yourself. What is this structure? It's the liver. Okay. What do you think this structure is? Stomach. It's the stomach. Remember uh, radiology of the, uh, what do you call it? The, X-rays, chest X-rays, we discussed there's a huge air bubble in the stomach because it's a hollow organ. Actually, our entire GI tract is hollow. So these are the bubbles, small, large bubbles. Okay. What do you think this is? What do you think this structure is? Kidney. Kidney. Kidneys. And then this one? Spleen. This one? Aorta. Abdominal, yeah. And then, what do you think this is? It's becoming larger. It's... Yes, becoming larger sense it, uh, in the sense it appears larger here. What do you think this is? Portal vein. This is just a revision. If you guys can answer these questions, you guys are good for basically any hospital uh, discussion. So over here, I will quickly go through this again. Okay, what do you think this organ is? It's on the liver, it is dull looking. What do you think this organ is? Yes. This one? What do you think this organ is? Inferior vena cava. This one? Kidney. Kidney. Okay. And over here we have the intestines. And finally, uh, let's take a look at this. These are the small bubbles. Here's the aorta, the kidneys, the end of the liver, 
then the inferior vena cava and the erector spinae okay we have discussed this this is the psoas uh, go back and check your notes for this okay now today let's discuss one more thing over here this is can someone tell me where this is from where do you think this uh, CT image is from? Which region of the body? Like near the rectum. No. Okay. Uh, we are not going down now. We are going up. But look at this and tell me. Look at these black. Lungs. Yes, these are the lungs. Okay. These are the lungs. I'm going to erase that. Uh, Okay, let me move the label here. So the first class on anatomy, it will be on the 7th or the 8th. Okay. On the 8th, it will be a free class. You guys can come. Uh, I'll be doing these again. What do you think this structure is? It's okay. What do you think this structure is? That's also a hollow tube. One, one is the trachea, the other one is the esophagus. Is one, okay, label the esophagus, which is the esophagus. Think of the anatomy and tell me. Think of uh, two is esophagus, one is. Can you give me a reason why? Uh, esophagus is behind the trachea. That's one. Uh, the other thing is the trachea is made out of cartilage. So it's not going to be compressed. You can see this structure here. It has been compressed. The esophagus. Okay. What do you think this is? Okay. Uh, let me make. What do you think this is? What? Uh, no. Uh, it's it's a blood vessel. Okay. Which blood vessel do you think this is? Superior vena cava. Alright. Superior vena cava. No. 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 Uh, this thing, uh, aorta emerging from the... It's the aorta. See. What do you think this is? This is the ending aorta. What do you think this is? This. This is the descending aorta. Okay. And this is the bifurcation of the pulmonary arteries. This region is the bifurcation of the pulmonary arteries. Don't worry, uh, we'll be discussing these again. I just wanted to give you guys a small intro into some radiological stuff because today's lesson will be really short, okay? First thing, let's do KUB imaging. KUB imaging literally means kidney, ureter, and bladder, okay? There's nothing to that, it's just those three words. And it is usually done as x-rays. Okay? These are x-rays. Now, the way you place the patient is like this. You place the patient in a supine position and you direct the beam at the abdominal region over here. Okay? That's it for that. Over here in this image, can you guys show me the location of the kidney? I'm going to uh, label some regions. Is it here? Uh, wait, let me just label some regions. Okay, uh, can you guys label where the kidney is? One, two. It's two, okay. You cannot really see it, but then this is where the kidney is. Now, can someone label the ureters? Can you see it? Three. Yeah, that's where it will be. But can you see the ureter? Like, if I erase this, do you think you can see the ureters? No. 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 Uh, then, uh, obviously, this is where the bladder will be, at region number four. But you cannot see that. So what's the use of this imaging? First thing. You cannot see these 
because there is no pathology. This is a normal KUB imaging. Okay. The second thing is to actually visualize these, you need to use a contrast. You need to use some sort of a dye. We'll come to that. But okay, let's go to that next. So in this, you cannot see anything because this is a normal KUV image. Okay. But if there was, let's say, a calcium stone, let's say there's calcium stones, there's calculi, then this is the imaging modality of choice because you can see it very clearly. Okay. Again, we'll come to those. So contrasting. Now, this is a contrasted image. Okay. We'll study the contrasting first. There's two types of contrasts. One is called the intravenous urogram. Okay. The other one is called retrograde urography. Okay. Let me explain this. In this, we inject a dye. Okay. We inject iodine. We inject iodine. Okay. And the iodine is going to be excreted from the kidney. So the injected iodine, it will be excreted from the kidney. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Okay. So what I do right now, it's the kidneys. Here are the kidneys. Okay. Now it is going to be excreted from the kidneys. So what you do is before you sort of begin the imaging, before you, the moment you give the IV iodine, you obstruct this, place a mass and obstruct this. Okay. You place a device, a special device and you obstruct the ureters. Okay. The reason for that is because within five minutes, there will be some produced, a little produced. Little bit of urine containing the dye. So we take images. I'll explain this again. Five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes with compression of ureter. Okay. So what you do is you take images, you take x-ray images at five minutes, 15 minutes, and 30 minutes with the compression of the ureters. Okay. So in the first five minutes, there will be a little bit of urine produced. Okay. In the next 10 minutes, more urine will be produced. And by the time you reach the 30th minute, this region will be full of urine. Okay. So uh, urine containing the iodine. Okay. So if you were to take the images at the, uh, you are supposed to take the images. When you take the images at these three times, you will clearly see the renal pelvises, these structures. Okay. Because the urine is obstructed here. Okay. Do you guys understand this? Then after 30 minutes, what you do is you remove the compression. You remove this compression, you remove this and you immediately take another picture because the urine is going to fall down into the bladder. Okay. There's something called gravity which works and uh, due to gravity, the urine will fall down into the bladder. So you immediately take a image again. Okay. Now let's do some uh, sort of logical thinking. Now let's say there's a kidney stone here. Okay. Let's say there's a kidney stone here in this imaging. If it completely blocks the uh, left kidney, if it completely blocks the left kidney, 
will this region be more visible or will this region be more visible at the top or the bottom if there's a, a block over here will the contrast show clearly the top region or the bottom region top region top region okay it's simple right because of the block the contrast will come and get stuck here okay that's the first thing you guys need to understand it's a logical thing okay then the second type of imaging is called retrograde urography what you do is you insert a catheter Okay, uh, just draw this so that you guys understand uh, where the imaging will show. Okay, this is actually a, a case like that. You can see there's some obstruction here. There has to be some obstruction. Okay, it could be because of what I told here as the block, or it could be a pathological thing. With, okay, so because of that obstruction, Okay, you can see that obstruction here. You guys can see if there was a block here, a complete block, this region, the region below to this will not be visible. Okay, because we are looking at iodine which came from blood into urine. From blood into urine. The retrograde urography is another story. It's the opposite of this. In this case, you put a, you put a catheter. You know the catheters which you use on patients? And then you inject the dye, okay? Then you inject the dye, which will start filling up these, okay? It will fill up upwards towards, let's say, okay, let's draw this side to be the normal side. And over here, there's a block. Do you guys understand this? In retrograde urography, you send in a catheter to the bladder and then you release the dye. Okay. You use the dye, you release it. And what happens is you will see that there's going to be the contrast going upwards. Okay. So if there's a block here, you won't see what's above it, okay? I hope you guys understood this because I'll be asking you guys as we go, which type of imaging is done, okay? Now I explained over here, we can't see anything much, okay? So that's why you need to contrast. And here's an example. Can someone answer this question? Is this IVU or retrograde urography? Think and answer. This this image. You, I hope I didn't hear you guys properly, but I hope you guys said IVU. Okay, because it uh, the dye comes from blood into the kidneys and it'll be going down. Now it's obstructed. Okay. Sorry. In the retrograde urography, we can see the uh, catheter, right? Uh, you mean the this catheter? Yeah. Yeah, but then uh, actually, you I cannot actually say yes or no because it's a plastic tube, right? I have no idea how it looks on radiology. So I hope you guys. I just want you guys to understand the difference between IVU and retrograde urography. Uh, did you understand the two differences, Arshin? I didn't get the retrograde urography. Okay, what you do is you just send in a catheter. Okay, you send a catheter, and then you release the dye. So once you release it to a to the bladder, and uh, usually these patients will have a full bladder. Okay. What does that mean? When a bladder is full, there's going to be urine present all over like this. 
Okay. Then you inject the dye. You inject a dye. It'll come out from the thing uh, from this catheter, and it'll diffuse across the whole region. It'll diffuse across this entire region. Okay. So uh, usually, we use this method. We use retrograde urography in patients with renal disease. So this, such as AKI, uh, CKD, these kinds of stuff. Because this is actually easier compared to the IV urogram. In IV urogram, you need to inject a dye. You need to take imaging at several times. So it's a bit harder, okay? But then if you want to visualize the calculi, this is going to be the best method, okay? If you want to see any uh, problems in the ca uh, calices, sorry, sorry, calices, the major calyx, minor calices, you can see it clearly because you'll be, because of this compression situation, you compress, let it fill, let it fill. So over time, the this region becomes really prominently, uh, it'll be really prominent on radiography, okay? So I hope you guys, Arshin, did you understand this? Uh, forget the catheter, you can take it out and do the imaging. Actually, that's probably how we, um, that's how it's supposed to be done, I say, because uh, it's a plastic, it can show up. Okay, do you guys understand the difference between uh, the non-contrast and the retrograde urography? Why it's important? Now, look at this. Okay, is this an abnormal or a normal urogram? Uh, uh, KUB image. Do you think this is an abnormal or normal KUB image? Normal. Yes, I'll tell you guys a sort of a rule of convenience to you if it looks normal unless it's a okay so let's say you go to the hospital and a doctor gives you this x-ray asking you to um, figure out what's wrong with it and to, if it looks normal to you if you don't see any obvious pathology just say it's normal it's because the doctors they love to trick you they love to hear you say some something really stupid. They you they will be laughing in on the inside when you say it's probably a CKD patient with uh, kidney failure stuff like that. They love to uh, trap you like that. Okay, this is a normal KUB image. Okay. Now let's take a look at these structures. This region over here is the renal papilla. Okay, I'm just labeling these structures. Oh, sorry. This is a minor calyx. Sees minor calyx. Okay, and this is a major calyx. And this is the renal pelvis. This is the uro, ureto pelvic junction, ureto pelvic junction. And these are the, this is the ureter, okay? Now, let me show you guys one more label. This is the renal parenchyma. Okay. This region over here, I hope, uh, you guys can see these labels, right? Don't worry, I'll send you guys this note once we are done with the lecture. Actually, I'll send it uh, tonight after the second lecture goes, okay? After the restrict. Now, is this a normal or an abnormal urogram? IVU, uh, sorry, KUB. Normal or abnormal? 
Sorry. Yes. Can you tell me where it is? Uh, just describe the location. There's a uh, block because the, uh, the, the minor and the major calluses are quite prominent and uh, below that it's not. Uh, wait. So I didn't label anything because I need you to explain your, in your own words the anatomical location of the defect. Just look at this. Look at one side. Look at the other side. And tell me which side has the problem first. Describe this image to me. Just, uh, just try. There's no harm. Left side. L left side. You mean this side? Okay. Let me label the two sides. Yeah. Okay. Okay, just going to show you guys. Uh, just tell me when to stop, okay? Is it yes, somewhere? Yes, on the right side. Yes, yes. It's on the right side. Can you guys see this? You can see something has happened to the calyx here, okay? Because imaging are never perfect. You will, uh, this is actually a normal picture, okay? But then over here, you can see something has happened here. What do you think this is? What do you think this structure is? Some sort of tumor? Uh, most likely, it's a cyst. It's a cyst, OK? Uh, now, why did I say the word possible? It's because when it comes to radiology, they will always give you a case. They will always give you some sort of a case study. They will describe this patient's symptoms, signs, everything. Because just from radiography, most of the time, unless it's something very obvious, like a classical sign, you cannot uh, just tell from looking at this. Okay, This could be a cyst. Cyst. This could be a tumor. A simple word would be obstruction. Okay, I hope you guys understand this. To know what type of obstruction it is, you need to know the case. But then with experience, you can immediately sort of, you can actually say what it is. Okay, let me explain why this is a cyst and not a tumor. First, look at this line. There's a, it's smooth. Okay, if it was a tumor, it is usually something like this. It's not, it's going to be a irregular, if it is a malignant tumor, it's going to be a irregular, irregular mass. Okay. So that comes with the experience, but telling and it's an obstruction. That's what you, that's what they look for. That's what you need to know. Now, this is a non-contrast image. Okay. This is over here. We have a non-contrast image. Can you tell me? What's wrong and where? Someone describe what's wrong and where? Uh, left kidney because in normal case, we don't see the organs. Yeah, uh, in the sense it's not clear. Uh, okay. What do you think is wrong here? What do you think is wrong here? Some kind of deposit that makes it look much more better. It has to be some sort of a stone, some sort of a like uh, maybe calcium stones or something. It could be a calcium stone, a phosphate stone. Uh, it's usually one of those. Okay. N the next question is this intra renal or extra renal? This stone, oh, it's a large stone. It's is this intrarenal or extrarenal? Intrarenal? Yeah, it's an intrarenal stone. Okay, that's obvious. It's within the kidney. Okay, what about this one? It's that's a bit hard. Extrarenal. Okay, let me zoom in a bit. Now tell me. Yeah, are you sure it's extra renal or is it intra renal? Intra renal. Yeah, you can see the kidney. 
sort of you can see the outline here okay this is called the staghorn calculus it's called the staghorn calculus now tell me the location of this stone tell me the location of this stone is it in the ureter or is it uh, somewhere else it shouldn't be hard look at the location it's the bladder yeah it's a it's a bladder stone it's a stone in the bladder okay this is where you get the bladder within the pelvic inlet so over here you cannot see here i did not explain this diagram yet i'll come to that okay you guys understand this should if you need me to explain something please ask me i will explain it again now describe the location of is it a normal one or is there something wrong here Something wrong with the. So there's a small stone on the left side. Yeah, where is it in the kidney, outside the kidney, or like where uh, location? It's on the left side, correct? Inside the kidney. Inside the kidney. If you look at, huh? It's in the ureter. Ureter. don't worry this comes with experience like try to understand this just google images of uh, kub whenever you are free you can uh, sort of diagnose those it's it has to be within the ureter okay now that's why non contrast kub is done mainly to check kidney stones okay and if you want to sort of see the renal papilla to see what has happened to the papilla you need to do a contrast can someone tell me what's wrong here what's the contrast used two questions what's wrong here what's the contrast used contrast used is ivu yeah can left side calyx is a bit big yeah Uh, why do you think that is there's an obstruction in the ureter on the left side yeah so, uh, it's simply this you can uh, let me uh, tell it uh, let's say a doctor asks you okay here's a kub image explain what's wrong there's a renal stone here and that has led to obstruction of the ureter which has led to the backflow of urine leading to dilation of the calyces there's going to be urine backflow like in the sense urine is just going to keep accumulating here it is going to come hit the stone come back and it is going to keep increasing our kidneys are going to keep producing that is going to lead to the dilation of the calyces okay it's not hard and uh, i hope you guys understand why it's an ivu okay if this was a uh if this was a retrograde urogram you will see the contrast over here you will see the contrast over here suddenly stopping here okay you will see the contrast suddenly stopping here you won't see what has happened to these do you guys understand that if there's an obstruction usually you would uh, like a stone you would use ivu okay but for renal patients like um aki that kind of diseases you can use uh, the uh, sorry the urogram now tell me what's wrong here this is a ct scan this is a ct scan tell me what's wrong in the first image on the uh, left kidney there are stones yes is it intrarenal within the renal parenchyma or is it extrarenal intrarenal yeah 
Okay. Here's the kidney. Here's the kidney. It's the same person. Okay. You can see the stones. Now, we did internal medicine. We didn't really talk about these imaging. Why do you think we didn't talk about this image? Where do you think this, this lesson is important for? Which major? There's four majors, internal medicine, surgery, genops, and pediatrics. When it comes to huh? surgery. surgery, okay. KUB imaging is essential for surgeons. It's that's why you will get these images. So let's say uh, on your final exam, on your final case discussion, the examiner gives you a KUB image and tells you this patient uh, gives you a short description of the patient and gives you that image. If you don't understand um, KUB imaging, it is hard for you to diagnose these patients, okay? This is something that comes under surgery, okay? Tell me what is wrong in this one? Diagnose this. It, it can't be hard in the sense you can see something which is obviously large. And on the other side, you don't see it. This is, huh? Urated large. Yeah. Right side of the urated. Yes. Okay. There's no contrast in this. If there was a contrast, you will see that brightly. But you can clearly see that this ureter has enlarged. Okay. This could be due to hydronephrosis, some problem which is causing the, the right side ureter to enlarge. Okay. That's now, is this a normal one or is it an abnormal one? Abnormal. Abnormal. Which side? Right side. Right side. Okay. I hope you guys can see here. Now, what do you think this could be? Just make a guess. Look at the shape and tell me. What do you want? Possible. Okay. Look at the shape. It's irregular margins. It's possibly a tumor. Uh, we cannot say without knowing the history of the patient. Okay, and that's the same logic here. Your data has enlarged. That's what you can say from the image. This could be due to hydronephrosis. We don't know the pathology, so you need to have the case. Now, this, is this normal? No. Okay, uh, what do you think is wrong? The ureters. Uh, you're saying there's two ureters? Yeah. Actually, two branches which form a ureter. Actually, this is a normal anatomical variant, okay? Different people have different anatomies. This is one of them, okay? You can have two ureters on yeah. each side. Yeah, they, uh, they have branched together They can, and they have formed a single one. Okay. This is just an anatomical variant, okay? Uh, don't worry, you won't get this. It's just for you to understand some uh, the concept about anatomical variations. Because this is commonly seen as, when you practice as a doctor, you will com commonly see these kinds of stuff. Like not all patients will have the same um, way the organs are. Like even the stomach, there's a lot of different appearances. There's staghorn appearance. There's a lot of different types of shapes for the stomach alone. Okay. There's different shapes for the stomach. So there's something called anatomic variance. I just need you guys to understand that. Okay. This is actually a case of duplication of the pelvis. There's two pelvi pelvises on each side. Now, this is a pathological condition, okay? 
can someone diagnose this? It's the same patient. There's a U, sort of a U shape here. You can see there's a U shape here. What do you think has happened here? It's a uh, okay. Yeah, it's a congenital abnormality. This is called a horseshoe kidney. Yeah. yeah. It's called a horseshoe kidney. So usually you learn this in pediatrics. I would, uh, but just understand this is a horseshoe kidney. It's an embryological problem. On during development, there's a defect. Let me explain that part just a bit. We have our blood vessels to the GI tract. There's something called the superior mesenteric artery, SMA. Then we have the inferior mesenteric artery. The ureteric bud, the ureter, sorry, the, yeah. This is a structure called the ureteric bud. Okay. The normal variant of it is supposed to be single on either side and it travels upwards to this level, the normal one. Okay, this is the normal one. However, in uh, patients with horseshoe kidney, remember this is a very common uh, KUB presentation. This is a very common KUB presentation, that's why I put it. In these patients, however, there's going to be something like an isthmus. There's a bridge connecting this. So when this migrates upwards, it's going to get stuck here. Okay, it is going to get stuck here. And that usually in um, most patients, it's asymptomatic. But in some patients, it can uh, cause different problems. Like very, these patients are highly prone to get kidney stones. Okay, kidney stone risk is high. There's a lot of other uh, problems which you learn for um, pediatrics, embryology. Now, uh, is there anyone who watches a TV show called Modern Family? Okay, there's a TV show in which uh, there's a character called Haley, and in real life she has a horseshoe kidney. So she has had several surgeries, so many surgeries. Like she showed in an interview all the scars from surgeries that she has had because of this condition. Okay, horseshoe kidney. Can someone tell me where the renal cellular carcinoma is? Hmm? Right. Sorry. Yeah, it's on the right side. The first rule of understanding radiology, right side is on your on your left side. Okay, always search for this R. Okay, that's the first rule. Always remember that so that you know where you are. Okay, uh, can someone tell me the location? Is it here, 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 or here? Is it here or here? Where do you think? Uh, Top. Hmm? Up. Yeah. You can see the renal cell carcinoma. Okay. And it has, okay, now let's talk a bit about densities. Densities. Now, there's a lot of concepts such as arterial phase imaging, venous phase imaging, mixed phase imaging, a lot of names like that. But then honestly, when it comes to the diagnosis, the diagnosis of this, of these imaging, you don't really need those. That's why I didn't go into detail here. Let's talk about imaging. Uh, how can I draw this? Okay. 
consider the image intensity like the brightness of this kidney is it brighter than the tumor or less brighter or is it the same brightness let me erase this same brightness same brightness okay so when it is the same brightness it is called iso dense okay it's the same brightness if the tumor so we are talking about the tumor now if the tumor is less brighter if it is more dull then it is called hypo or hyper which one if the tumor is less bright hypo yeah it's hypo okay it's hypo dense if it is brighter something like this if it is going to be brighter if whatever mass we are talking about is brighter than the adjacent re regions it's called hyper dense okay now let's take a bit more time to understand that concept so we talked about these stones now okay uh is the other stones hyper dense hyper dense iso dense compared to the normal kidney hyper dense hyper dense yeah that's what you said is that hard it's just brighter so you call it hyper dense okay that's why you can see it on this normal your uh, kub okay so uh, let me talk about the stones a bit let me just explain the stones now over here you guys found the stone easily in these because these stones are hyper dense these stones are hyper dense i'm going to erase this part so for these kidney stones you give them a label you call these positive stones okay you call these stones positive stones because you can see these as hyper dense and there's two types of stones there's the phosphate stones and the oxalate stones okay there's the phosphate stones and there's the oxalate stones calcium phosphate calcium oxalate these stones they are usually considered positive stones however there's another group of stones in which there are hypodense stones and these are called negative stones and the most common example can someone guess what's the other type of stone that you know so when it comes to the kidney there's mainly three types of stones what's the third type it starts with the u second one starts with a uric acid uric acid okay these are hypodense usually these you cannot even see them so if you get a a google an image and send it to the group then this would not be visible okay this part will not be visible however this part will be visible okay it will be hypodense this region will be hypodense this there uh, but then there will be nothing here so should give you the uh, i this must be a hypo dense stone okay i'll uh, google an image and send a hypo dense stone and um, yeah i'll add it to this 
document and send it to the group after 9 10 pm after the next lecture is done we are almost done so take a look at this okay let's just summarize everything you guys can see okay the reason i didn't do this in the beginning is because everything is labeled I think that to be the case before we started our discussion this is the final calisis this part then you have the major calis here are the uh, this regions are the major calises and they all open to the renal pelvis so, is this a anatomical variant where there's two pelvis or one pelvis in each side one pelvis okay and this is the pelvic ureter junction there's nothing hard there pelvic the pelvis opens to the ureter and then here's the ureter so the contrast is not really clear here but then it goes downwards all the way to this opening here it is called the vesico ureteric junction whenever you hear the word vesico the word vesicle you should think of the bladder okay the word vesicle it's usually associated with the bladder okay yeah that's it i hope you guys understood this let me just summarize everything quickly this is a kub image of a normal patient this is what you get when you're normal this over here it's an air bubble okay remember black is air then there's the two types you can do depending on the patient's symptoms depending on what you have to see iv urogram usually to see the these calices okay while the retrograde urography it's easier because usually uh, kidney patients they already have a catheter insert you just give them the contrast okay that's it and you guys should be able to decide it's uh, looking at these is this ivu or a retrograde urography or a normal non contrast urogram sorry kub okay and then you need to understand what a normal one looks like okay and remember that rule doctors love to mess with you so always if you don't find anything wrong just say it's normal because I have it happens a lot it happens more, it has happened to me okay uh, in the sense uh, to people have been in the hospital with at least four times okay different doctors they, all of them one of the their favorite games is to do that that actually uh, they do it to test your knowledge now then the calculus if it is a positive stone you will see it very clearly and uh, based on the location you should be able to tell is if it's a intrarenal or extrarenal stone surgical topics then the bladder you can see there's a stone in the bladder over here it's a positive stone which is in the ureter you can look carefully you can see the outline of the bladder of the kidney so the kidney is going to be somewhere here and you can see here if you look carefully you can see it i don't know how visible it is in this connection but you can see this outline over here i don't know i can see it uh, because for me it's obviously fully clear the connection uh, i'm the one who's presenting uh, i don't know from your end and this is let's assume this is the same stone this is the st same stone without contrast and with contrast you can suddenly see that the renal calices they have uh, dilated okay then these ct scans will clearly show you calcium stones very clearly okay calcium in bones and um, stones they will show up very clearly in ct scans okay you don't need contrast and over here it's obvious uh, the ureter has enlarged okay now uh, let's say you get this you just get this how do you know what to look for 
if it's the GI tract or if it's the kidney, usually you will know where you are. If it is in the nephrology ward and you will know what the patient is. It will be a patient with obvious, uh, like you will have some sort of a history, okay? So uh, if the patient complains of an abdominal thing, you mainly look at the abdomen first. There's, I don't see anything wrong in the abdomen, uh, possible calcifications. But then this is a kidney patient. You can uh, see that the ureter has enlarged, okay? Obstruction, probably due to a tumor. I mean, anatomical variants, horseshoe kidney, renal cellular carcinoma. This is isodense. There can be different densities. And that's it. So, uh, yeah, how do I stop? Oh. Do you guys have any?